Hello Aces, welcome to module two, lesson number five, getting into the minds of your customers. Today we're gonna to be learning how to uncover your customer's inner psychology so then that way you can provide something that they want and something that they need. This is some really advanced psychological items which is made super easy for you to understand and once you learn this this gives you an unfair advantage to more than 80 percent of the restaurants out there because people just don't know about this stuff i'm putting in my background as a psychologist into this for you so make sure you guys start taking notes okay so we talked about the golden trifecta and if you haven't had the chance to go through it it is in the beginning of our modules lesson number one it is super important for you to understand because the highest level of success you can achieve is by combining the three different concepts the concept of your restaurant the location of your restaurant and the customers of your um, the customers who you want to serve to and when they all three of these items overlap and when they have and work and when they're working with each other this middle part is what we call the golden trifecta once you can achieve that that's when you're going to have lineups out the doors okay so which is why we're going into this part the customer's journey okay once you identify this you're going to be prepared for some really long lineup so make sure you guys pay attention once again, do not go forward if you have not already created your master avatar worksheet from the lesson previously, okay? If not, just pause this one, go back to the previous lesson because it is crucial for you to actually have that before you move on. Otherwise, everything that I say would not have enough context, okay? Go back and complete that worksheet and then come back. But if you, ever, if you already have done that, great, let's move on. Knowing your customer, Target customer is essential when crafting your winning menu, which we're gonna go into in the next lesson. Today, we're gonna to be talking about job to be done. What is job to be done? Job to be done is understanding what is the underlying problem your customer is trying to solve, okay? I'll give you an example, drill and the hole. I go into Home Depot and I ask them for a drill. They sell me a bunch of different drills. They sell me a, a, a bunch of different uh, drill bits, uh, batteries and saws and everything. And I'm just like totally overwhelmed because technically for me, I'm not really looking for a drill. All I want is to have a hole in the wall so then that way I can hang my painting. But in reality, I, when I went into Home Depot, this guy not understanding what is that job for me to be to, to be doing, they end up upselling me on the drill bits, on the drills, on the saws and everything, when in reality, all I want is a hole in the goddamn wall. Understanding the job to be done for your customer is crucial to your success, even in the restaurant environment. And let me elaborate on that. An example from McDonald's, guys. McDonald's, this was years ago, okay? McDonald's wants to increase their sales for their Oreo milkshake. They're like, you know what? We need to figure this stuff out because sales are not that great. They want to make sure that they increase that sales in order for them to keep the milkshake in their service. <clears throat> they decided to use this job to be done theory in action. Okay. And they began to study what job does the milkshake serve for their customers? So what did they do? They went and set up tent. <laughs> They had analysts sat outside of their restaurant for more than 18 hours to come up with this study. And this is a real life example, and I'm not even making this up, okay? You can actually Google this and you're gonna find this. In 18 hours, but this is a collective of days of studying and analyzing, they figured that more than half of the milkshakes were sold before 8.30 a.m. Typically speaking, we'd think that milkshakes really come after dinner time and it's just basically a dessert. That's kind of what my thought about milkshakes are. But actually analyzing, set up, setting up the tent, putting in the work allowed me to understand, oh, this is completely different from what people are actually doing. So this serves as a great lesson that usually your assumptions are not correct. You need to go and validate and prove your assumptions. The only thing they purchased and always alone, huh, this is very interesting. They got in the car and drove off. These are the statistics and these are the results that came back from the analysts sitting and setting up camp. Now, we were thinking about what job do you think customers came in to McDonald's before 8.30 to buy a milkshake for? What is it that they're trying to solve? Let's try to make some assumptions. 
Turns out that they have a long, boring drive to work. They needed something to engage with life and not fall asleep at the wheel. They're not super hungry yet and they don't want to be bothered with all the messy stuff and that they don't want to be driving with their knees while holding onto the sandwich and eating fries and making a whole mess, which is the reason why they order a milkshake so then that way they can hold it with one hand, place it in a cup holder and keep them engaged. It's like a little treat for them. This is a nuance that I never really thought would, would be happening with milkshakes and McDonald's and early breakfast. Yet, that's exactly what is happening with McDonald's, super insightful. Knowing this, what did McDonald's do? After they analyzed this, after they get the, the, the statistics, they moved the milkshake machine to the front so people can have it much faster because they understand people go in and they go out. They also milked their mil milkshakes even thicker than usual so then that way it would last the 15, 20, half an hour ride to work. And the results, guys, are you ready? The results, they ten seven times the sales of milkshake just by doing these adjustments, just by understanding the job to be done for their customers. This is something that is super insightful. I hope you understand this example so then that way you can use this to your advantage. Now that we understand this, putting things into action, we're gonna identify your ideal customers and now that you understand the job to be done theory, we're gonna find out what job your ideal customers needs to be done, okay? So then that way you can provide a menu item that really caters to your ideal customers. So then that way you're gonna have lined up around the block and have a really profitable restaurant. Chipotle, once again, is a master at being able to do this. A great, another great example is that they solved the problem of, of office people. They want something quick, grab and go, something that is not like fast food like McDonald's, that is not healthy, and that's exactly where Chipotle comes in. Their stuff is filling, it is quick, easy, grab and go, and on top of that, it is healthy. And that's the reason why they've been super successful because they understand the job to be done in their customer's point of view. Now, how do you even find the job to be done? First of all, the first step in doing this is, and once again, in the link below, download the worksheet and work on this together with me, okay? Identify the jobs that your customers are trying to get done at your food and beverage shop. You should now have a very good idea of the customers that you're wanting to serve. Therefore, go and identify what is it that they're trying to solve? What is the problem that they're trying to solve, okay? If, it, if it's a bachelor looking for some comfort food on a Friday night, or is it a family man bringing a bunch of food back to the family, right? For a wife that doesn't cook really identify the job to be done? Or is it a couple looking to be wined and dined, dazzled and impressed? Knowing the type of person that your ideal customer is allows you to cater your product offering specifically to that demographic. And that is why it is super crucial for you to identify your customer avatar first. That's the reason why you need to be very specific to the type of person you're serving and not be broad. And these are the reasons why you need to do that, okay? Next up is to categorize these jobs. Now that you've written down and jot down all these jobs to be done, and by the, by, by the way, when you have your jobs to be done, it could be a lot of different jobs to be, uh, that you're doing and that you're fulfilling. It is okay too. Just write them all down, list them out. Now's the time to actually categorize it. Describe the main task that your customers want to achieve. And understanding this, okay, you now can actually identify the functional job to be done and the emotional job to be done. And let me clarify what the difference would be. And it is really, really simple, guys. So don't, just because I use really crazy lingo doesn't mean it's, it's super complicated, okay? Functional are just practical, objective customer requirements. That means there's no emotions involved. Emotional, on the other hand, is all about emotional. It's about how someone feels and it's more about perception, okay? As an example, let's say, for example, I want to impress my wife. I want to bring her out on a date. What is the functional job to be done? The functional job to be done is that, you know what? I need to impress my wife. Therefore, the food better be good. Needs to have tasteful decoration that the ambiences would be nice because we want to have a night out. We want to impress her. And these are all functional. These are all 
tangible things that I get to see and I get to eat. And it has to have attentive customer service. These are all functional tasks to be done. Now that we have identified that, let's figure out the emotional part, the intangible part, the things that more about the feelings, the emotions, okay? Upscale feeling, ooh, nice and dandy. I'm getting served, ooh, I feel a little bit different. Treat it like a VIP. Hello, Mr. Lee, how can I help you? These are emotional job to be done, okay? Status upgrade. By me posting a picture eating at this place, sharing it on my Instagram, my TikTok, my Facebook, people will feel like, oh wow, that's a nice place. Oh wow, they're eating at this nice restaurant. Automatically, it gives me a status upgrade. These are an example of functional and emotional job to be done. Now that you understand the difference, you understand the job to be done, go ahead and identify your jobs. Go ahead and categorize the jobs that you have identified between functional and emotional elements. In the worksheet below, you should be able to follow that to the T and start go start and actually go and create your jobs to be done. In this lesson, we have just taught you and showed you and walked you through the steps to uncover your customer's inner psychology. By you uncovering it, now we know that what we can offer them needs to fulfill these jobs to be done. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. In the next lesson, what we're gonna be talking about is crafting a winning menu. Knowing the psychological state, we can now provide something that your customers would love because you have this unfair advantage. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.